friends, it's Paige Evans and I'm back with a follow-up process video featuring the other 2x2 two two paper pads. So there are two paper pads that come in the package, one with patterns and one with phrases. So for this layout, I am focusing on the phrases 2x2 two two paper pads. So I grabbed all 18 pieces of paper with all these cute sentiments and phrases and icons and shapes on them. And on a white cardstock background, I am putting them across. It looks like there are seven spots left. And these squares are two inches square. So I also printed seven photos to two inches square. And I'm moving the squares of paper around until I like the spacing of the empty spots where the photos can go. So I tried to put one or two on each row across and up and down. So then I will put my pictures in place. I wasn't sure about the white background though. I really like using pattern papers for my background because pattern papers are my absolute favorite, favorite scrapbook supply. So I tested them on this light blue paper from Bungalow Lane. And while I loved it, I also wanted to try the craft background, also from Bungalow Lane, and I decided I liked this one best. So whatever you prefer, maybe you like it on white, maybe you like it on blue or pink, just pick the background that you wanna go with. And then I wanna do machine stitching between all of the squares of paper and photos. So about every 2.4 inches, I am making a mark with my pencil and I'm gonna have to move everything out of the way while I stitch because nothing's glued down. So then I will make the same marks every 2.4 inches across the bottom and then rotate my paper and do it across the top and bottom again. So I've made a mark every 2.4 inches on every side and then if you want to, you can lightly connect those lines up and down just so you have a guideline of where to machine stitch but I don't stress trying to make your strip your lines perfectly straight you know this is made by hand it's gonna be a little wonky no matter what you do so I am using my brother sewing machine that I've used since before even Fox was born so it's like 12 years old I'm using Coates and Clark white thread and a basic running stitch and I am stitching connecting all of those pencil lines together so I've got a grid background now finally trimming off this barcode strip you can do that now you can do it at the beginning you can do it later maybe you want to keep it there I don't know and then trimming the threads that are connected so now I'm placing the papers and the photos back just to see if I like the way this looks and I am a fan of the texture and interest that the machine stitching added. You could do a hand stitch if you want but I am going to do some hand stitching in just a minute. So the next thing I want to do is add another layer of texture and interest. So I'm using a pair of fine tipped scissors and distressing the edges of all the pattern paper pieces. Not the photos, just the paper swatches and this brings out the white edged core and helps them pop off the background even more. Now I wanted to do some hand stitching. I promised myself I was going to keep this layout simple, bare minimum, but goodness knows I can't get away from hand stitching. I love hand stitching. So I am poking holes about every quarter inch around some of these larger icons and on this swatch that says feels like home I, I feel like the letters are large enough that I can add that I can add hand stitching detail so again piercing a hole about a quarter inch maybe an eighth of an inch because the letters are a little smaller than the larger icons are and around this embroidery hoop and then around the heart so I added hand stitching details to one two three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of the swatches, which mirrors the seven photos. So then I'm going to grab my embroidery threads and you can take a screenshot of this screen. These are all of the threads that I've pulled to match Bungalow Lane. These are DMC embroidery threads and I always use all six strands for the maximum amount of texture and 
depth popping off the page. So I am going to do a mix of chain link stitches and back stitches and I'll leave a link to my YouTube tutorial where I show how to do these hand stitches in a slower and more what what's the word I'm trying to say more in-depth process right now I'm just doing a chain link stitch around the apple shape and basically making links to connect the stitches again I'll leave the link to the process video that goes in depth and explains how to do these hand stitches because I hand stitch all the time so it took me about an hour to add the hand stitching details to these seven squares and then I am putting them back in place and I've decided to move things around once again so that the photos and the stitched squares and the unstitched squares are balanced so that's what I'm trying to achieve is just not having all of the stitched ones next to each other having larger icons balanced around and yep all about balance Finally, time to adhere things in place. So I'm using double-sided double super sticky tape to attach all of the paper squares, and then I'm using foam squares to attach all seven photos so that they can pop off the page as well. And trimming off the excess threads, those are hanging off the edges, of, so just trim those off. And then since the background has so much going on already, all I'm doing is adding an XO heart foam sticker and a this here foam sticker from the foam thickers pack and then a little round sticker on this section to add a caption that's all the embellishing i'm doing and i feel like that's enough and i'm happy with how this layout turned out i am a huge fan of these two by two squares now i'm going to use them more often and they're also especially great for pocket page scrapbooking so tucking them into those two by two pockets for Project Life and December Daily and 4x4 mini albums. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and I will see you again soon. Have a great day.